the word of God that was read, there was something that the apostle said. He dropped the statement, glory to God, that I'd like to speak with you from, if the Lord will allow me, and if you would just bear with me your patience. Amen. And what he said was, I'm gaining to live. I don't know if you remember he said that. He said, I'm gaining to live. It was such a simple statement, but it just hit me right in my gut. And I was like, okay, well, what did he say? He began to explain how in his weight loss journey and in his muscle building journey, he found himself lately gaining weight. Okay, I need you to listen. He said, I have to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He said, I'm gaining weight and I don't like it. Because I have an image of what I want myself to look like, right? My ass should be here, my chest should be here, my back should be like this. I don't like that I'm gaining weight. He said, but I need to gain the weight in order to live. I said, okay, but what did you say? He said, I need to gain it in order to live. Glory to God. And I just began to meditate on that. And the Lord just, just grabbed a hold of me. Hallelujah. And I want to share something that I found out. Hallelujah. Through the scriptures and also studying just a little bit about weightlifting. I have not lifted weights in a very long time. It's about time to get back there. Amen. Y'all. For me, I'm getting there. Amen. Slowly but surely, I'm getting there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our scripture tonight, our focus scripture, is one simple passage of scripture. This is coming from the book of Isaiah. This is chapter number 10 and verse number 27. It's behind me. Hallelujah. And I never have topics, but the Lord gave me the topic, and it was simply gaining to live. Let me pause right here for a moment. I'm not coming with a new prophetic word. I'm not coming with a new revelation. Glory to God. We have revelation already. Glory to God. But a pathway was made for me. Glory to God. And I intend to walk there in tonight. Amen. So gaining to live. The scripture says, verse 27, and it shall come to pass. In that day, hallelujah, what day is that? That day is whatever day you decide to believe the word of the Lord, that his burden shall be taken away from off of thy shoulder, glory to God, and his yoke from off of thy neck. Now, who is his? If you go and you read further on in the scripture, if you read before this focus scripture, we're talking about the captivity of Israel. We're talking about tormentors. We're talking about those that would defy the word of God, that would defy the Holy One, the Holy God, the Holy One of Israel, and brought the people of God into captivity and put yokes of bondage around the people of God's neck. It was a heavy burden. It was a heavy bondage. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever been in something that was heavy? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the truth of the matter is you might have even put yourself there because of your disobedience, because of your lack of trust in God, because you just didn't move when you were supposed to move. Glory to God. Or sometimes God has put you in a situation, come on, Job, hallelujah, where he's trying to get glory out of your life. And so now you look around and you find yourself in a place of captivity. You find yourself in a place of bondage. You find yourself in a place where it feels like you're losing ground, feels like you're losing momentum, feel like you're losing hope. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I know that I've been there before. And this is after salvation. Glory to God. And I was still saved. I was still the chosen of God, but I was just in a place, hallelujah, where I felt like I could not move to the right or to the left. So when all of the scriptures preceding verse number 27, this is what the Bible is talking about. Hallelujah. He's talking about the captivity of Israel. Hallelujah. Now listen, the Lord is talking about the captivity of Israel, but somewhere round about in the 20th verse, he begins to streamline who he's talking to because he begins to now talk to the remnant. Understand, hallelujah, we could all be in the same place 
hearing the same word under the same anointing, under the same power, same prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. And some of us are just dull of hearing. This is why you need to pray for your brother and your sister. Hallelujah. That's why they sing the song. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind and they took the time because it took some time for me to come out of my stubbornness and to come out of my willfulness and to come out of my foolishness. But had it not been for a pastor gamble had it not been for a sister tate had it not been for a deacon robinson that took the time to pray for me i might not be here right now even reading the scripture before you so we give honor to those that took the time to pray hallelujah so he begins to streamline what he's saying and he's now talking to a remnant, glory to God, hallelujah. And he begins to talk about how he's going to redeem the remnant and what he's going to do as the almighty God. And so as we continue reading down, and I'm gonna start again, it says, and it shall come to pass, because it came to pass before that you were in bondage, that you were despondent, that you were depressed, that you had no hope, glory to God. But it's going to come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off of thy shoulder and his yoke from off of thy neck. Glory to God. And the yoke shall be destroyed yeah, yeah, because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I had to do a little research about a yoke. I wrote some notes down. A yoke. And I, I saw a picture of it. A yoke, it's usually on an oxen. It's usually on the top of the neck, in front of the shoulders. It is usually made, hallelujah, it's not too heavy because the oxen still need to be able to move and to work, but it's made of a strong wood. So a yoke is something that is not easily broken. A yoke is something that is not, well, why haven't I? Because a yoke is not easily broken. Some things only come but by prayer and fasting. A yoke is not easily broken. A stronghold is not easily broken, but it can be broken. Hallelujah. So it's not too heavy. It's worn on the top of the neck, in front of the shoulders. It is made of strong wood. Glory to God. Usually there are two oxen that are yoked together to pull weight or to pull equipment. Every now and again, you're going to see an individual oxen that might be yoked. But typically, it's two by two, side by side. And I said, okay, Lord, why did you have me focus on that? He said, well, I need you to understand that even though there's a yoke and this yoke is not too heavy, my yoke is even greater because the Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. The Bible says that in him we'll find rest for our souls. Glory to God. So I'd rather have the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ than a yoke of sin and shame. Glory to God. It's made of strong wood. I said that already. Usually two oxen are yoked together so that they can pull the weight or the equipment. So if we're yoked together to do the work, hallelujah, if we're yoked together in bondage, that means at some point or another, I'm expecting to come out with my sister and my brother. Hallelujah. I'm not sharing in a victory by myself. I can party by myself. Yes, I can. Hallelujah. But it takes two, hallelujah, to make a thing go right. Hallelujah to Jesus. So I'm looking to party with my brother and my sister. I'm looking to come out. I'm looking to be delivered. I don't want to be delivered, hallelujah, and see you still in bondage. I don't want to be delivered and step over you, hallelujah. Well, I guess that's her business. No, we are in this thing together. We are helpers one to another. So when you cry, I cry. When you bleed, I bleed. And when you're disobedient, that's when I pray. I don't gossip. I don't talk about you. Hallelujah. That's when I pray. That's when I turn my plate down. That's when I pick up the phone. Hallelujah. With integrity. Where are you? How are you? What's your vibe? Where you been? Where are you in your headspace? I need to know. Because something is missing in the house of God. 
Somebody messaged me on Sunday, I miss your presence. That's how we should be. When you're not here, I miss you. I miss you on that front row. I miss you in the booth. I miss you standing at the door. Hallelujah. I miss you in that corner. Hallelujah to Jesus. So back to the yoke. They usually yoke two by two. Hallelujah. It says unequal yoking causes load, the load to go around in circles. I did not know that. Right, And we often hear that scripture, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have light with darkness. You know the scripture. What happens when I'm equally yoked? I'm literally going around in a circle with you. We're going around, we're going nowhere. We're not gaining progress. We're not gaining momentum. Hallelujah. So sometimes that unequal yoking may come because I'm taller and you're shorter. It may come because I'm stronger and you're weaker. Hallelujah. So in those instances, I need to find your weakness and I need to reinforce it. Hallelujah. If we're going to be able to come out of this thing together. Hallelujah. So where you might be a little shorter, somebody's got to compensate so that we can get the work done. Not so that I can esteem myself higher than you, but so that we can get the work done. So these are the things that I found out about a yoke, because where the Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed, so the thing that's on the neck, in front of the shoulders, that's not too heavy, but made of strong wood, usually two oxen have it on, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When I dug a little deeper, it was very interesting to read Another translation of that scripture, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. One translation says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the oil. Or the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fat. So oil representing that we are precious unto the Lord. He has anointed our heads with oil. We are called unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a people called out of a people. So anytime you read or you hear the word anointing, it is reflective of the fact that God has identified you as someone belonging to himself. Because there was a time where you were weak. You were the smallest nation. You were sickly. You were dirty. I found you in your own vomit. I found you in your own blood. But I picked you up in my sea and I anointed you. I washed your head. Glory to God. And I put raiment on you. So anytime you hear anointing, that's what the scripture is talking about. It is referring to God's chosen people. That's why the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Not because of a title, but because they have been selected by God. And so we cannot transgress or trespass that covenant relationship between the Lord and his anointed one. So the other translation, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fat. So as this oxen has this yoke upon its neck, and it is working, and it is toiling. As he's working, and as he's toiling, he's getting stronger. Can you imagine if you have something on your neck and shoulder, what it's doing? It's literally buffing you. It's literally building you. So go back in your mind. What has been building you in 2021? What has been on your neck and on your shoulder? And you thought you were going to drown, but look, it's December 1st and you're in the house of God. It's December 1st and you're watching online. It's December 1st and you're in Miami on vacation. Because God has been building you. That yoke was not meant to destroy you. But what it's doing is strengthening. It's conditioning. It's building you. The sickness is building you. It's teaching you, hallelujah, how to pray. It's teaching you how to trust God. It's teaching you not to waver in your mind with every wind of doctrine. It's teaching you how to take care of your children, how to treat your husband, how to, how, how, how to. It's teaching you how to restore things and not throw things away. 
and I had to slow down for a minute because that was for me. It taught me how to restore a thing and not throw it away. It taught me, hallelujah, how not to get frustrated, hallelujah, and become self-righteous, but to humble myself and realize I made some mistakes along the way, and I need to repent it. I see. I needed to go back to the altar. I needed to do my first works over. It wasn't him. It was me. It was me, oh Lord, and I was standing in the need of prayer. So I asked the question again. What was the yoke that was on you in 2021 that you thought was going to kill you, that you thought would not cause you to see the end of this year, but did you know that it was building you, that it was strengthening you? And so now that yoke that used to weigh you down, even though it wasn't too heavy, it still was a weight for you. Because what's a weight for her may not be a weight for me. And what's easy for her may be very difficult for me. So as I'm going through, and as I'm dealing, and as I'm traversing life, hallelujah, I look back and I realize I'm not bent over anymore, but I'm starting to raise up. I'm starting to gain strength in my core. Hallelujah, in my spirit, man, I'm starting to gain strength. And this mind that was in Christ Jesus is now in me. Hallelujah, I'm gaining feet like hinds feet. And I'm walking in the high places of the earth, glory to God. And I'm commanding strongholds to come down. I didn't even realize these things were happening because I was so focused on the yoke. And now I'm strengthened. But what's happened now is that the yoke doesn't fit me anymore. So in that translation when it says, and the yoke shall be destroyed, not broken, not a latch falling off, not something that we got to take to the carpenter to get repaired. The Bible says destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Come on, somebody say destroyed. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness. So now I'm fat. I've grown fat in God. Hallelujah. I've gained a new mindset. Glory to God. My thinking is different. I put away childish things. I be finally became a man. Hallelujah. Because when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away the childish things. And now the yoke has been destroyed because of the fatness. And the thing about it is that it can't be put back on anymore because it's been destroyed. So when the man of God said, I'm gaining to lift, I said, okay, Lord, this is what you're telling us. This is what we're gaining, and this is why we're getting fat. Hallelujah. And it's okay every now and then. I know everybody want to be snatched, and that's good. Amen in Jesus' name. But sometimes it's okay to get fat. Glory to God. Some of us need to get fat. Hallelujah. Some of us need to put away some darndish. Hallelujah. Some of us need to put away some malnutrition, and we need to get fat in the Holy Ghost. So the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, because of the oil, because of the fatness. And we thank God. So I moved over and I said, okay, Lord, now teach me a little bit about weightlifting. That's not my thing, but I need to know because this is what our man of God was saying. This was sort of like the parable from which he was coming. This was the area from which he was coming. Amen. So I did a little bit of research about weightlifting. And I did find out that in weightlifting, you will gain weight. You will gain weight. Yes, you exercise and you do cardio and all of those other things. But as you begin strength training, as you begin resistance training, you will gain weight. Even as you are eating right and exercising and, you know, watching your intake and drinking your water and minding your business and putting on your seatbelt, you're going to gain some weight. Amen. And what I found out is that after three months of weightlifting, women usually gain one to two pounds to get one to two pounds. So you might need to take that dress out just a little bit because you gained about two more pounds. And men usually gain about twice that amount. Amen. Because you are gaining muscle mass. 
You're not gaining the fatness that makes you unhealthy, that causes your cholesterol to rise, that causes your blood sugar to rise, that messes with your heart function and all of that. You're gaining muscle mass. And the muscles are now being strength trained and they are now becoming metabolically efficient. And you are burning more calories while you're resting. So the fight is not as hard because I'm literally burning calories as I'm resting in a resting state. So it's not always about benching and pushing and grunting. Even while I'm resting, hallelujah, I'm burning. Things are burning off, glory to God. But when I look at myself in the mirror and when I step on the scale, the numbers are not quite what I want them to be. But when I check my Holy Ghost barometer, I realize that there are some muscles that have now been strengthened in God. So I'm gaining to lift. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it blessed me when I heard that. So I said, okay, Lord, we're gaining to lift. The scripture says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off of thy shoulder and his yoke from off of thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing being the oil, the anointing being the fatness, glory to God. And we thank God for that. We understand what yoking is. I am an educator, so I always go back and I scaffold to make sure that you understand everything that has been said. Now, now we understand it also on the side of weightlifting. What's happening, hallelujah, when you're benching and when you're strength training, you are going to gain weight. So I'm gaining. And there was a list that our apostle, he listed some things. And I began to take notes. This was about two months ago. And for those of you that are prayer warriors, and for those of you that are intercessors, sometimes we, we, we lose the words to say, and sometimes we pray in the Holy Ghost. But when you're praying in English, there are certain things that you need to be praying against. There are certain things that you need to be binding and loosing. So I said to the Lord, what am I gaining? I asked him again and again, what am I gaining? I know that I'm gaining muscle when I'm in the gym. I know that I'm gaining fatness in the, in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And in the spirit realm, tell me specifically what I am gaining. And he said to me, you're gaining strength against every momentum breaker in your life. Every momentum breaker in your life. Because you got to understand it is December 1st. And our man of God told us about two months ago or maybe a month and a half ago. He began to tell us from the spirit of God that there's still time on the clock for you. That God is giving you another opportunity. He's giving us another chance. We're in the final quarter. I am not a football player, but I actually sat down and I watched a Ravens game with my husband. Glory to God. And I began to understand some things. And that fourth quarter is critical. And we were watching a game and the two teams were, I think they were in overtime. Both, they were in overtime. And one was trying to beat the other. So that last portion of the game, the last portion of the year, December 1st to December 31st is a critical time. It's not a time to lose focus. It's not a time to become discouraged. It's not a time to become defeated. And if you need to link up with a brother or sister that you know has a prayer life, that you know can get a prayer through, that you need to do that because I intend to see you blessed. I intend to see my church blessed. I intend to see my pastors blessed. I intend to see my leaders blessed, hallelujah, in this last quarter. So I'm praying against every momentum breaker. I'm praying against the spirit spirit of double-mindedness. Hallelujah. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And the Bible says he shall obtain nothing from the Lord. I'm praying against my past. Everything just when I get ready to gain some speed and that thing comes back and it tries to distract me and it tries to discourage me. I'm praying against everything in my past that will try to pull me back. I'm praying against individualism. Hallelujah. Because I am helpers one to another. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. It is not about me. We are all a part of God's body. You know the song. 
I pray for you and you pray for me. Hallelujah. It is God's will, hallelujah, that every need be supplied. So I'm praying against individualism. I'm praying against every critical attitude, every naysayer, every hater, hallelujah, everybody that says we can't do it. No, we will and we shall and we shall do it to the glory of God. We shall do it as unto the Lord for it is the Lord that will get the credit in this hour. I'm praying against every critical attitude. I'm praying against the spirit of tradition that says you got to do it this way and you got to sit that way and your skirt got to be that way. Yes, we will operate decently and in order, but God has a way that's mighty sweet. Who can know the mind of God? He moves how he wants to move and he speaks how he wants to speak. Were you not here on Sunday? Did you not see the spirit of the Lord sweep through this place? Did you not see the Lord take possession of our leader and speak how he wanted to speak. God will have his way in this house and in this hour and I will be the first to say God here I am thy servant heareth. Do what you want to do God. Do it how you want to do. Thy perfect will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So I'm praying against every critical attitude. I'm praying against tradition. <clears throat> I'm praying against apathy. Apathy, just lethargy. Hallelujah. You're just, there, you're just there like a lump of clay. Hallelujah. If it happens, it happens. And if it don't, it don't. No, you need to quicken in Jesus' name. You need to look alive because we got work to do in the kingdom of God. I'm praying against apathy. I'm praying against dishonesty. God created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. My spirit isn't right to my soul and I need you to fix my mind. I need you to remove lying from my tongue because a white lie is still a lie. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm looking for God, hallelujah, to remove it far from me because he said a liar will not tarry in my sight. And I don't want to be lost. I don't want to miss the things of God. So I'm praying against dishonesty. And I'm praying for an integral spirit. I'm praying that when I open up my mouth, that my yay will be yay. And that my nay will be nay. I'm praying that when I go into the center, hallelujah, that they can believe the words that I say. Because I'm not going to lie. But I'm going to tell the truth in Jesus' name. I'm going to do it decently. And I'm going to do it in order. I'm not going to say, well this is just me you just gotta accept me for who I am the devil is a liar because I need you to be delivered so that we can win souls for the kingdom of Christ so I'm praying against dishonesty I'm praying against conformity which means that I won't remain the same, which means, hallelujah, that I need to be transformed even by the renewing of my mind, that I might prove what is that perfect and good and acceptable will of God. I'm praying that from last year to this year, you don't see the same kaida, the same immaturity, the same jealousy, the same nasty attitude, that something was shaking me, that it was shake off of me, even like the yoke, that it would be destroyed because of the oil, because of the anointing, because of the fatness. Hey, glory to God. I'm praying against ingratitude. Now remember, these are all of the things that I'm gaining strength for. I'm gaining strength that I might pray against these things. Hallelujah. I don't want to be the same. And that's one of the things that gets us in trouble because you want to remain the same. Come on and shake yourself in Jesus' name and understand, hallelujah, get reflective, glory to God. Be able to look at yourself and see yourself for who you really are. I'm a mess, I'm a mess, I'm a mess. But God, if you touch me one more time, in my so-called mercy, I'll never be the same again. I see I'm praying against conformity 
I'm praying against ingratitude. Glory to God. I'm praying, God, that you would humble my spirit, uh, that you would make me grateful for my brother and sister, that you would not, oh God, have me to look uh, as you a big eye and her a little you, that we would all be the same. Glory to God. That I might be thankful for the things that God has done. Hallelujah. Not coming in the house of God with a sour face like I sucked a lemon. Not thanking God for his goodness. Just sitting in my seat like God hasn't done anything. You didn't have to be here today. Your children didn't have to wake up this morning. That cough could have turned into COVID. And it could have took them out. But God. It could have been another way. Pastors dying left and right, closing the doors of the church. But every Tuesday, hallelujah, we got a pastor that comes, hallelujah, sits in that chair, and he begins to intercede by the power of the living God. And when he can't come, we have another pastor, glory to God, that will pray heaven down, that will bind and loose. We got mothers, hallelujah, that know how to speak in the realm of the spirit. And you're ungrateful? The devil is a liar. We're praying against indecision. Indecision. How long halt ye between two opinions? Make up your mind. If God be God, then serve him. And serve him with everything that you have. I know you're young. I know you're cute. I know you're snatched. Serve the Lord and be snatched. Serve him and be cute. Serve him so you don't go to hell. Serve him so you don't end up in a mess. Serve him in my soul. Serve the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is thought. And let him cleave to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. That's the Bible, and the Bible is right. Somebody's wrong. Ooh. So these are the things that our apostle listed a while ago. And the Lord said, hallelujah, when you're gaining, you're gaining the strength to fight against these things because these things are your momentum breakers. Hallelujah. These are the things that continue to slow you down time after time after time. And you find yourself going five miles forward and three miles back. Hallelujah. It will not be so. We shall have everything that God says we shall have according to our faith and to our obedience. Glory to God. Because I need to be able to lift my next level. I need to be able to lift every blessing that God has for me. So I've spent time, I've toiled, I've suffered, I prayed, I fasted, I made some mistakes, hallelujah, and I had some wins, hallelujah, some losses along the way, hallelujah, so I've gained so that I can lift, glory to God, so then when I truly walk into everything that God has for me, glory to God, blessings upon blessings, so fast that my head will spin, glory to God, and I begin to go up, up up hallelujah to Jesus I'm able to lift it and I'm able to sustain it hallelujah I won't lose it as fast as I get it glory to God I won't make foolish decisions glory to God I won't share with my brother and my sister hallelujah I won't be hallelujah ungrateful and stingy hallelujah but I'll be able to tell you this is how I did it and you can do it too glory to God Come on and put your hands together. We are gaining to lift in this hour on this first night of December 2021. Glory to God, glory to God. I'm gaining to lift, hallelujah. I don't want to lose anymore. I don't want to fail anymore. I don't want to falter anymore. I need an effortless win. I need sweatless victory. Because God, I sweated, hallelujah, all year long. Glory to God. I made so many mistakes, God, hallelujah. I was lazy, glory to God. 
I lied to myself, glory to God, I would not look myself in the face and see that it was me standing in the need. I would not look myself in the face and see my inconsistencies. But here I stand tonight, God, and if you set the altar on fire, and if you're moving the house, God, I'll come, hallelujah, with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, I bless thee, O Lord. I bless you in the sanctuary. I bless you in the firmament of your power. I praise you for your mighty acts. I praise you according to your excellent greatness. I praise you with the sound of the trumpet. I praise you with the sultry and harp. I praise you with stringed instruments and organs. I praise you upon the loud cymbals. I praise you upon the high sounding cymbals. Everything that has breath. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. This is a time, in my see, where you begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to speak to the Lord. Come on and lift your hands in the atmosphere. You know where you are. You know the word has pricked your heart. You know that the Holy Ghost is talking to you. Come on and get it right. Hallelujah. For he said in the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. But come subject, come obedient to the word of the Lord. And I'll incline my ear unto you. And I'll come in and I'll sit with you. And I'll come in and I'll sit on you. And I'll come in and I'll anoint you. And I'll come in and I'll clothe you. I'll clean you up in my soul that I see you. I'll do it for you, says the Lord. I'll do it for your children. I'll do it for that one that's in the hospital. I'll do it for the one that's lost all hope. I'll do it for the one that's about to commit suicide. I'll do it for the one that is sick. I'll do it for the one that is ailing in their mind. I'll do it, says the Lord. I'll do it for the house of God. I'll do it for free and independent apostolic church. I'll do it for your bishop. I'll do it for your elect lady. I'll do it for the first family. Hallelujah, precious are they. But I'll do it for them. Every daughter and every son. Every granddaughter in the name of Jesus. I'll do it, says the Lord. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. not deserving but God is faithful we are not deserving but God is long-suffering he's patient and he's kind hallelujah hallelujah glory to God my foot had almost slipped and I surely would have fainted except I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord on December 1st 2021 I see the goodness of the Lord I see the goodness of the Lord I see businesses flourishing I see bodies being healed I see minds being transformed I see a standard being raised I see that holiness is still right I see young people walking in their anointing I see young people being delivered I see young women being saved I see them going forth in the Holy Ghost I see our babies raising up I see them doing well in school I see a spirit of obedience such as we've never seen before I see our leadership walking in excellence hallelujah hallelujah I see strife being erased I see confusion leaving the mind I see I see I see something good is happening today in the name of Jesus come on and put your hands together Oh, we honor the Lord tonight. Come on and put your hands together. In my soko, let there be a spirit of gratitude as you're clapping your hands. Let there be a spirit of gratitude because you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? And so we're gaining to lift. 
You might not be in the gym, but gain to lift. Gain intentionally. Stay focused. Be steadfast and unmovable. Always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah. And in that same spirit of honor, we thank God for our bishop, for our apostle, for our elect lady, trusting us to be able to stand before the people of God and deliver what thus saith the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We speak blessings on blessings to the household of faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the prayer tonight is that as we leave this place, but not God's presence, and I'm not benedicting, amen, but as we leave this place, but never God's presence, that the Lord would ignite in us such a fire, hallelujah, that we might continue on in the spirit of God and in the things of God, hallelujah. Cursed be every momentum breaker in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, that we would go forth Hallelujah. And power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. This is my prayer for our church in Jesus' name. Come on and put your hands together one more time. I guess I am benedicting. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Amen. No announcements. Amen. Amen. We do have Friends and Family Day on this Sunday. Put your hands together for that. That's an awesome thing. Amen. So let's reach somebody. Tell somebody. Tell someone about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Let them come to your church. Let them see. Let them see our love. Let them see our fellowship. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our leaders will be returning in the next couple of days, so let's continue to pray for them and leave them unbothered. Amen. In Jesus' name, yes. Let us honor them and leave them unbothered. Amen. Please pay attention to any announcements that may be coming forth. Amen. In Jesus' name, please be safe. Amen. Continue to wear your mask. Continue to protect yourselves even while you're out and about. Hallelujah, because everything is not COVID. Something is just a common cold. Hallelujah, but it still makes you feel really yucky. Amen. So please take care of yourselves so that we can all come together and we can fellowship together. Let's lift up holding hands without wrath and doubting. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide here now henceforth and forever in Jesus name that the people of grace and peace wow what a word listen we're not out of word but we're out of time thank you for joining us freely to the apostolic church I'm the senior pastor Dr. Keith K. Curry for a wonderful service we have today join us again 7 o'clock on Wednesdays 7 p.m. our power and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our worship service you can sow by the number that's on the screen right now. We have plenty of ways to give, and I want you to use those ways.